Oh, oh is man. that uh, Dust in the Wind? Actually, no, you fucking idiot. It's obviously an arrangement of Cannibal Corpse's hammer-smashed face. Oh. Are you sure it's not Dust in the Wind by Kansas? Because it sounds a bit like Dust in the Wind by Kansas. <laughs> to your Philistine ears, of course it does. I guess you're right. Now that I think about it, I'm hearing a little bit of resemblance to Cannibal Corpse, but it does sound a little bit more like bloody chunks or like a skull full of maggots, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you know what? That's actually a very astute observation. I'm impressed. You know what? I'm glad this was a very, very good, intelligent conversation this ended up being. I mean, what intelligent conversation doesn't involve bloody chunks? And being buried in the backyard or born in a casket, per se. Right, right. All, all classic, classic works of true melody that uh, Shostakovich uh, would be green with envy if he were to hear today. Indeed. Yes. Welcome, everybody, to episode 40 of Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. I'm Robert. And I'm Alex. Now, as per the usual, it's time for our, well, it won't be two minutes, but our pointless interlude of sports. Is it ever two minutes? Uh, rarely. I think, I think I looked at this recently. There's maybe three or four episodes, but... Anyway. That's the joke. Yeah. In case you guys didn't get it. Yeah, it just it's not two minutes, it's just two minutes is a snappy title. And here yeah. we are, and our presumably ten minutes starts now. So we'll start with the obvious, the Super Bowl. Okay, so you and I had different thoughts on this. Audible sigh. Audible sigh, and I'm like audible eh. Yeah. I'm more of an eh, you're more of a sigh. Now you're saying that you think this is seriously the most boring Super Bowl you've ever seen in your entire life. Boring, yeah. I would, maybe. I would, I, I don't remember exact, because I know the one you're going to mention, I don't remember exactly how bad that was, but as a Super Bowl experience, this was definitely the the worst overall experience that I can recall. Like, overall. Not just the game. Now... Okay, why is that? The low score? Is that what bugs you so much? The low score, but also just the package in general. The game, the, the commercials, I wasn't a fan of, and the halftime show. It was all just, none of it was, everything was below par. All right, see, first of all, I'm going to stop you right there. Mm-hmm. You watched the halftime show. That was your first mistake. Well, I, I put on headphones, listened to some, uh, what was it? Some Jimi Hendrix, some Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. You know, I that's what I do every half every year at halftime if if I'm near music and mm-hmm. I'm not like at a Super Bowl party. I just put on some headphones, listen to music I want to hear. Oh, I didn't tune in. Or, or if I'm at a party or like hanging out with people, I just like find people who want to like go in a different room and like you know not watch. Yeah, no. I or if we're all in the same room, we talk loudly over it. Yeah, I did not tune in for Maroon Five. No. I tuned in for the very, very idealistic, namely, uh, premise of seeing a potential performance of a certain song from a show that I grew up with, that was featured in a certain show that I grew up with, which didn't end up happening. What's that? Well, that the whole SpongeBob thing. Oh, what the hell are you talking about? You didn't hear about this? No. So what happened was Steven Hillenburg died recently. He's known as the, you know, he created SpongeBob and all that mess. Um, and there was a petition on change.org. It was, f- it was just like a funny little thing where they're yeah. like, get the Super Bowl slash Maroon 5 to play Sweet Victory, which is a song by, uh, oh God, I can't think of the guy's name, but it's a song by a, it was featured in a SpongeBob episode. And it's like an episode where they play the halftime show of a, of the Super Bowl. Right. Um, and throughout the, you know, it was a fun little joke, like, okay, that's funny. So it's clear it wasn't going to happen. Well, no, but, then the NFL started saying it was going to fucking happen, and they were, like, teasing it, and it's like, oh, shit, you're actually going to do it. And then they showed, like, what ended up happening was they didn't play the song. They showed, like, a clip. You, did, you didn't see it at all? Like, you didn't see the no, SpongeBob No, I, I told you what I did. I literally uh, put on headphones, didn't look at the screen, and listened to some good old-fashioned classic rock and or roll. And what they what ended up happening was is they they showed a cl- an animated clip of it was the SpongeBob characters in the costumes from that scene, but they they end up introducing Travis Scott singing Sicko Mode. And I'm like, Who's wow, Travis they, Scott again. He's a rapper, uh, the artist, R&B artist, rapper, whatever. Something. He's an up and coming guy, but he had a big I heard big his platform. name. I just I always get him confused with Travis Barker. Like the the drummer the, from Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, yeah. See, that's see, whenever I, I hear Travis Scott, I'm like, that's not a country singer. Like, it always yeah. throws me off. I'm like, that's such a country singer you, name. You thinking <laughs> Travis Tritt? 
Something like that, but like I hear of like Travis and Scott are like the two whitest fucking names ever. Yeah, and that's I mean nothing against the guy whose name he can't. I mean he's born with that name, but like God damn it, that is the whitest name ever. <laughs> yes, it is. But I guess hey, people like sicko mode, and they're not so happy about it now. And God damn it, I was oh I was I was cheated, man. And I you know it's it was gonna suck either way, but Hold there on. would have at least been some consolation. We got this. Can we just talk about the fucking game? But it's the whole package. All right. It, you know, they could have even not done it. In fact, it would have been better if they fucking hadn't. You know, at least they would have just been like, well, it didn't happen. But they fucking just gave us part of it. It's like, just don't fucking do it then if you're not going to do it right. Like, okay. you don't have to bow to the internet, especially if you're going to fuck it up and get them pissed. Like, you, you're better off not doing it at all. So this is like marketing the Birds of Prey movie. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> oh, no, man. I got you. Okay, so... But the, that's that. So, so the Super Bowl halftime show was no good. It was no good, but it also it the, barely the, is nowadays. <laughs> well, it, it never is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it especially wasn't good because the one thing that could have made it interesting or noteworthy to you, at least, or to many or people, different or yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, no, of some note that would have made it different. Instead of basically doing the proverbial, if more people join in, the song will get better. Clip from Family Guy. Yep, they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So that's why that sucked. But, yes. But the game. So I'm not saying that it was an exciting game. It was not. Mm-hmm. However, I I kind of disagree with the idea that it was entirely all boring because the Rams' defense, they showed up to play. Yeah. The uh, the Patriots' defense, they, they just showed up, mm-hmm. as we've talked about. Yeah. It was more the Rams' defense were stifling – uh, Brady. Yeah, but on the flip side, like the the Patriots defense didn't do have they didn't have to do much to throw Goff off of his game. Right, but it was one of those defensive battles where yeah, the defense was doing fine against Brady, but like there weren't many sacks. Was there one sack? There was on, a huge sack on against, Brady. No, sorry, no. Okay, see, I was getting confused. Well, with Goff, there was. I mean, no, he got fucked a, up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was lie. a gigantic sack for, like, a loss of yards that took him out of field goal. Yeah, it was not good. Uh, but I think they only tackled no, Brady okay, yeah. once. And there was yeah. one pick, and it was it was a bad throw on Brady's part. But That was early in the game. I just – I wanted a, a, a – I wanted a game. Like, you yeah. know, like more than two touch there no one threw a touchdown pass. All right, but here's my one argument to why this isn't the worst. Okay. Okay, if no one scored and it's the third or fourth quarter or whatever, it's still a close game. Oh. A tu- it just takes a touchdown to make things drastically different. Whereas, in my opinion, one of the worst Super Bowls is the Seahawks Broncos from a few years back. Mm-hmm. It was just a slaughter. Uh, it's just like this isn't interesting to watch because there you don't even have that little drama. You know, what- here's the thing about that Super Bowl. At least the Seahawks didn't win the past, like, fucking five Super Bowls. Fair. <laughs> you know what? That's a fair assessment. At least it was like, you know what? At least, And as much as I'm, like, not about the Seattle Seahawks, fucking okay. At least it's a different team. It's, yeah, it's a different team. Whereas, here's a, here's a fucking nuclear take and an irrational take, I'd say, even though I'm going to say it. I think every time this, this, the uh, New England Patriots, I think every time they've won the Super Bowl since 2012 has been a fucking bad thing for Friend, the NFL. I think overall it has, in the same way that the Golden State Warriors winning the past however the fuck out of however the fuck championships is a bad thing for the NBA. Right. I'd partly agree with that, mm-hmm. except for the fact that, at the very least, mm-hmm. we're well, let's not kid ourselves. We're about to enter our probably fourth year of the same finals at the NBA. Yeah. At the very, very tiny least... The Pats have played different opponents for the most part. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I mean, it, you know, you'll get it every now and then you'll get a... Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing on both sides. Like every now and then you'll get a LeBron year where it was like, what was it, 2015? 20, no, it was 2016, right? Or no, it was 2015 into 2016 where he beat uh, fucking, what do you call it? Warriors? He beat the Warriors, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? They came back from a 3-1 to one deficit or whatever. No, I think they're they're down three zero. Three zero, and he came and back. It was, yeah, it was like it was that same. Wasn't that the same year the Cubs? The Cubs came, beat Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. They, they came. I think 
Something like that. It but, was like a number of unprecedented like series in I just, a row or whatever. I hate walking into these games and expecting the Patriots to win and them winning. I just I don't and you know, they are the they are well, you know what? Here's the thing. There are so many greats in the NBA or on the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant, Steph, fucking uh I would say uh Trish, uh, Tristan Tom- Tristan Thompson is that his name? Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. Tristan Thompson, a different guy. Clay yeah. Thompson. Yeah, Clay Thompson. He is super underrated. Um, yeah. And as much as I'm not a big Draymond Green fan, you know he's really good too. There are a lot of fucking nobodies on every Patriots winning Super Bowl winning team. Yeah. How but- many like actual Hall of Famers have come out of Super Bowl like Patriots Super Bowl teams? I don't know. I think that maybe like two. They just. They just do what hockey does. They'll just get like a Brad Richards who's kind of old, but you only need him for one year and yeah. then he's gone. But you have your core or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just Well, my point is oh, but, it's all about Belichick. Right, but also let, let's not let's not completely sweep under the rug some of the defense's efforts. Like yeah. H- Hightower had a really good game. He was the one who had that gigantic sack mm-hmm. that like it looked like he just like picked him up and carried him like 20 yards for a loss. I'll it's give crazy. him that, but I, you know what the other thing about this Super Bowl was? Was Jesus Christ, did I overestimate Jared Goff? Yeah. And you know what? He seems like a really nice dude, and he's a good quarterback, but he's just, he wasn't ready for the show. Yeah. He clearly showed that. He is, he is, I, I, I told you this. I'm like, he's like fucking Mitch, he's like Mitch without the running option. Yeah. Like that's, that's what he looked like in that yeah. game in particular. Not to take away anything from the amazing season that he had, yeah. yes, but fuck, man, you got to put up a fight. You know what? One field goal. <laughs> hey, man, it was a defensive battle for the ages, much like the toilet bowl. Yeah. You ever heard about that game? Oh, yeah. It was like in the 80s. It was like 0-0 between, I think it was Oregon State and someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse, but... No, lowest, I, lowest scoring Super Bowl, man. I'm like, come on. This was a great NFL season, I it, thought. It, it was a weak game, mm-hmm. but, you know, the like I said, the Rams defense show, uh, showed up to play. Yeah. They the did Rams, a great job. The Rams offense didn't. Did not, no. The, and that's that was, we we knew that going in. They yeah. were battered. You were, they were facing so I'm, a healthy, That's what I'm saying. I, I would say three-fourths of, of the teams showed up ready to play. And that's. Because Patriots offense and defense were ready. Well, that, a lot of Ram, people were Ram's shitting on Sean McVay. What? A lot of people were shitting on Sean McVay. Like I thought that you know no one's going to hire offensive minded quarterback or uh, offensive minded young head coaches now. What's the new narrative going to be? It's like motherfucker, his quarterback folded in every goddamn play every, whenever the pocket like closed. It's like how is that a, his fault? He's not much of a scrambler. Or at no. Le- or, Sorry. At least in this game, it didn't look like scrambling was on his radar. What do you want him to do? Hand off to the fucking wi- or hand off to the running back that they have that's injured? Like he's kind of hamstrung. No pun intended. Yeah. Like there's not much he could have done. He he went in there, not really. It was it was a fucking bad game. I should have known it even more so from last week. I'm like this game's gonna suck ass, isn't it? Because <laughs> the two teams that shouldn't have ended up there ended up there. We, yeah. we mentioned it. It should have been the Saints and it should have been the Chiefs because they had the most productive offenses in both of their leagues. They had the the quarterbacks. If we're talking best quarterbacks in either league this past year, fucking them, Breeze and Mahomes, killer years. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have minded a Patriots going against the Saints. Yeah. I, 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 the battle of the, 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 the God tiers, man. Yeah, the God tier geezers. Because I do not, if the Patriots played that same way mm-hmm. against the Saints, I think the St- Saints would have won for sure. And I wouldn't have minded seeing the maybe Rams. Not, maybe not by a ton. Right. Maybe it'd be like a like 21, like 10 game. But I think they definitely would have won if the teams carried over the way they played in yeah. the next game. And I wouldn't have minded seeing, again, the rematch of the highest scoring game this year, the yeah. Rams and Chiefs. That would have been cool too, you know? But, you know, sometimes coulda, woulda, mighta, shoulda, whatever. And then yeah. UFC, yeah. J- Jose Aldo just smacked the shit out of this guy. <laughs> and then he jumped in the audience. I'm like, oh, no, where is this going? Oh, God, I've but, seen but this But I before. forgot. Yeah, I was like, oh, not again. But then it was like, oh, he's in Brazil, you know. Oh, okay. And he was just doing the. Just the, being happy. No, he's doing the rock star thing. Oh, okay. He literally, like, does the pose. Like, he has his arms all stretched out. And mm. it's like, love me. <laughs> 
Sounds like I should have watched MMA. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember the rest of the card. I kind of wasn't paying much attention. Mm -hmm. That was the fight I remember, but Jose Aldo smacked the shit out of him. Israel Adesanya fighting... that uh, guy, man. Yeah, I do too, and he's fighting Anderson Silva this weekend. That'll be a crazy match. That, it's... Okay, I guess, but at mm. the same time, it's it's just not it's not really that cool because Anderson Silva has been on the down tick ever since he broke his leg uh, against Chris Weidman. If you're a fan of Israel Adesanya, it'll be a good watch. I mean, I'm a fan of both of them. This, this guy's on the up. This guy's on the uptick, man. I, that's why it's like, dude, this He'll is probably a, win. This is a waste of time because it's mm. like, oh. He's going to get the title shot against the winner of Gastelum and uh, Whitaker. Mm-hmm. It's just like, this is dumb. Just, I I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just, it seems like it's a in-between fight for Adesanya when we know, really, it's just like, who cares? Let's just skip this charade. Right. <laughs> and because we, I'd be shocked beyond fucking belief mm-hmm. if Silva beats him. Yeah, that would be interesting. No, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, this is kind of, it just feels like pageantry yeah. to, to get to the winner of Gastelum. It's like, let that shit be settled and then have Adesanya fight him. I just like seeing that kid fight, man. That's true. So I don't know. It's just like weird, though. Mm-hmm. So I got that. Uh, Ioana's going back down to 115. Which makes sense. I think so, because it's like, dude, what's she supposed to do? She's fought. Joanna, or sorry, Shevchenko, what, three times in Muay Thai and once in UFC or maybe, was it twice? I can't remember. Mm. Point is, it's, you know, whatever. She's trying. She right. tried. I think she'd have a closer match if she got the trilogy with Rose. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see how that goes before she's got to fight Andraj. Ooh. Man, if, if she fucking lands one like she did on <laughs> Kovalkiewicz. It's going to be lights out. It's going to be lights out. Uh, but Rose, obviously, being a She champ, can hold her own. She, oh, she can hold her own. <laughs> she's no slouch no. at all. Yeah, she's... Not at all. It'll be a matchup, that's for sure. That No, I'm serious. That'll be real interesting. When is that going to be? Uh, I think that's 237 or something. That's like a okay. while from now. Okay. Because the 234 is the one this weekend, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then I can't remember if there's any other huge matches coming up. They're still working on Cerrone and uh, McGregor. Okay. What about any Bellator stuff? I know we talked uh, Fedor and... Uh... I don't... Oh, there's actually a big one. Uh, MVP versus mm. Paul Daly. Oh, okay. Michael Venom Page. Yeah, he's yeah. He's sort of... Well, interestingly enough, he's very similar fight style to Israel Adesanya. Hmm. A little more Taekwondo, though. I haven't seen... I've heard... I've definitely seen his face. I haven't heard, watched a whole lot of his fights. Dude gets... Like, he'll do, like, the ridiculous Taekwondo kicks, like, tornado kicks and shit. Man. We, plenty of wheel kicks and all that. Like, the crazy ones that you like don't it. see a lot. <laughs> nice. Uh, and, and he kind of moves similar to uh, Silva of his prime. Mm, okay. Uh, so that's all I can think of for the... Big, big MMA fights. Mm-hmm. And then there's all the other same drama bullshit. Oh, when is Khabib going to fight? Duh, suspension? Is it happening? Blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, who's DC going to fight next? All that shit's the John same. Jones's steroids. And blah, blah, his blah. picogram, blah, blah. It's like the this same. This weight cutting is ridiculous. It should be Brock Lesnar. Who, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, God. Dana, do something about the weight cutting. <laughs> Oh, fuck me. I forgot. Hmm. Usman Woodley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, it's not what we all wanted at Welterweight. No. Which is to see him smash Colby Covington's face in. Yes. But I don't know why they didn't do that either, because Colby Covington's not happy about it. But no. now he's, uh, as Misha Tate pointed out on her radio show, she she told him not to bite the hand that feeds. Mm. I have to agree with Misha on this one. I didn't know she had a radio show. Yeah, it's like on um, Sirius or something. Well, oh, nice. There's just like clips of it get played on MMA World. Oh, cool. Uh, Matt Sarah's got one. Mm. It's like with Jim Norton. That's kind of cool. Weird. Fun. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, so that, I mean, yeah, I would have rather seen Covington, but this is 
just this is almost as good. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't have the the drama flair. But you know what? Maybe that's what the sport needs right now. Just, just a simple match of fisticuffs. Perhaps it may. Yeah. So that'll do it for MMA. Yeah, I got nothing for Bellator. Hawks. Yeah. Six game winning streak. Closing Holy in on shit. Closing in on uh, that playoff. Or not, yeah. you know, not clinching the playoffs, but being in playoff contention. Don't call it a comeback. Yeah, God almighty. The season, a, the season just got very interesting. It's going to be a bloodbath. Oh, my God, yeah, because it's like they're one game away, but they have to leapfrog like nine teams in the process. That are like all within like a game of each other or less. It, no, it's, it's like, not tied. It's, it's like, what is it for this second fucking wild card? It's like... The, the the guys looking outside, it's like there's like five or six of them that are tied. Mm-hmm. It's pretty ridiculous as of this podcast. Hawks are looking good, though. Power play's looking good. Yeah. PK is not looking too bad either. No. not He's actually, he in the last game that I heard of, he scored yeah. a good amount. His assists, I mean, he's always no, great PK. with this. What the fuck are you talking about? Talking about Patrick Kane? No. Well, sure, but I, I meant penalty kill. Oh, I thought you were talking about, oh, you, how do you... Your nickname for Patrick Kane is Kaner. Kaner, yeah. I've heard well, some not, people call him PK. PK. Why though? There's PK Subban. You can't. You can't. There's one PK. In, I don't know. It's kind of whatever. Like, it's like, kind of like calling somebody Slugger. Sure. <laughs> Kaner. Well, they, but that's their thing. Taser. Taser. Kaner. Kaner. When Shaw was there, it was Shawzy. Yeah. What was Duncan Keith's nickname? You, you know what the slang for you, you celebrate scoring a goal in hockey? Was that you gotta have yourself a good celly, eh? <laughs> Just have a celly. <laughs> What the hell is Keith's name? Just Keith? <laughs> oh, yeah, and Keith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaner, Taser, Shawzy, and Keith. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, no, they're they're closing in on I something. Say, I quickly want to say I want to eat crow on uh, Murphy. He's looking good. Yeah. I, I'm shocked at how— I'll, I'll eat a bit of crow. I'm shocked at how well they've— They've kind of salvaged a bit of this season. You know, like, there's still 20-some, 20 26, 27, 8 games left or whatever. Right? Yeah. But, you know, there's from this, what they look like, they look better, a lot better they're than They're looking a lot better because the one thing I've noticed, well, two things. We're getting, we're, we're getting better at pressuring uh, the opposition as they're trying to get in transition in the, the neutral zone. Mm. Or we're just pressuring them more. You know, mm-hmm. we're not making it so easy to gain access to our blue line. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two is we're finishing games. Yeah. Know, that's like a more like broad statement. Ah, finishing games. But I mean like we're playing a complete 60 minutes and sometimes we're playing a complete 60 plus. Overtime. Well, that was what was killing me is overtime is this season. There's been a lot of games we've lost in overtime. Mm-hmm. Last game, Delia, or not, sorry, not Delia, uh, Perlini mm-hmm. had a boneheaded penalty. Yeah. And it's like, there's three minutes left. You know this is going to lead to a six on four. Mm-hmm. So That's what ended up happening. Yeah, and they scored. But you know what? We took in stride. We're like, fear not. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. And it was, ugh, I had a hard, skipped a beat a couple times <laughs> on a couple of breakaways. Mm-hmm. But Taser finished it with authority. Yeah, it was a good win. Yeah. And I, I'm glad to see Taser's picking it up more. Yeah, I... I'm, I still miss... Some, sometimes his frustration was showing like a little yeah. bit like it's been a t- earlier in this season. It's been a tough couple of years for him, man. Yeah. It's just... I mean, there's a lot of slack to pick up when you, yeah. when you drop off like that. Right. And, you know, you lose the you lose Quenville. And they they I think they've adjusted really well to the, you know, Colleton's new, like, the... the his new, new scheme. His new scheme, his new power play formation strategy and such. And I, I you know, as much as I still love Quenville and I, I rue... Of course. I rue the day he was fired. I, you know, I, I respect Colleton yeah. as a, as, I, as I a was, replacement. Yeah, I was a little harsh on him at first. But, like, how the hell could I not be? Mm-hmm. I'm not, I mean, you're not making... You're not giving me the, the luxury of rational thinking when you fire Q. <laughs> yeah. It's weird that I actually dislike... The replacement for Quenville, the second winningest coach or whatever yeah. in NHL, and like the most in Blackhawks, and I'm then I am with like the replacement for the Bulls former coach that was fired. Yeah, he's not doing so good. Yeah, Jim Boylan, man. And now we traded Robin Lopez. Robin Lopez and Bobby Porter are gone. We got Otto Porter Jr. Who okay, is, he's basically he'll be here for a year or two, and All he'll right. be trade bait later. I'm holding out for that draft, man. I want to get yeah, that Zion Williamson the, kid. <laughs> the, yeah, the Bulls are not having the, the 
the upswing that yeah. the Hawks are having right now. We're going to be playing that. We're going to look like we're trying, but we're really tanking mediocrity dance yeah. for the next like 20 games, and that'll be it. Hey, man, whatever it takes to have a better season next year. Yeah, let's let's do it, guys. <laughs> So that was way over two minutes. Hey, man, it, we had a good, a good amount of fucking Super Bowl. The Super Bowl happened. Super Bowl. The Super Bowl happened. Tom, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Bill Belichick. Edelman. Yeah, jeez. I like how it's like, you're the MVP because you actually caught it three times. You know what, <laughs> you know what fucking blows my mind is they just, they just had a fucking victory parade four months ago. Yeah. For the fucking, uh, for the World Series. Yep. Fuck you, Boston. You don't. You're not allowed to have all your fucking they're, sports be good. We've mentioned this before. They're a, they're a winning ass team, man. God, <laughs> they're good. They're lucky. Yeah. All right, so that'll do it for sports. Good God. <laughs> all right, and so on to cricket. I mean, hold on. What what the fuck is this podcast? Right, movies yeah. and stuff and TV. Forgot what we're doing here. It's a lot of sports. Uh, anyway, so now we move on to the news. First up, the Child's Play remake trailer. It's dropped. It's dropped, and uh, I might have to eat crow. I might. You don't, we don't know. I might, we don't know for sure. But here's, here's, I guess, my two cents about that. The reason why I might eat crow is because this this looks pretty good, the way it's shot and all. Mm -hmm. Some of the things they're doing actually look kind of interesting. I was a little worried early because in the trailer you see a lot of stock footage, it looks like, but we do get some footage footage. And it is a short trailer overall, but the footage that we see, it looks pretty sharp. Okay, right. It looks sharp, but I, I do want to say this. Even if, even if this movie ends up being good, and even if I end up seeing it, I don't like the precedent it could set. Mm -hmm. Well, see, you can do a TV show and a, a reboot movie of a different series at the same time. Fuck it. Just make four of the next thing. Ooh. Musketeers. We got a Musketeers TV show on CW. We also have a Musketeers movie from Paramount. Fuck it. Who cares? Just make five Musketeers. No, oh, no. Not, not five, but, but <laughs> three, five. Jesus Christ. Five different three, three Musketeers, Musketeers iterations. Yeah. Or yeah. like, oh, we got to have ten Godzillas at once. It's that's what worries me about this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I guess, now that I'll, I'll, you know, take a step back more rationally than just spaz now, like fuck you, this is a goddamn team, because <laughs> I know that was my initial reaction. Mm -hmm. Now that I'll take a step back, I think that's kind of what I was trying to say all along, mm -hmm. and that a lot of times, obviously, remakes suck dick. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a, a combination of the precedent it was setting and, you know, history having a good chance of repeating itself. Right. But now, now that I'll like, now that I've like calmed the fuck down, this does look pretty good. It's interesting because I think the, the, the problem with the problem I think most people have with remakes is that you get a essentially the same movie. So remakes in a lot of people's minds, right. are, they're creatively lazy you know, thought processes and filmmaking styles. It's like, oh, it's just like the same deal over and over again. Like Poltergeist is the same movie, but not as good. Uh, RoboCop is like a not as good version of the first RoboCop. It's like yeah. the same movie, but it's just Pretty not much. as good. Um, this, there's, they're at least toying with a couple of things here. It's like, and, and, for a short trailer, you get a pretty good taste of what a lot of those things are. First of all, it's no longer the good guy doll. It's, it's the, the buddy, buddy doll. Dolls. And the eye is the Wi-Fi symbol. Yeah, the oh, the dot on the, the dot eye. on the eye, yeah. yeah. And like I guess uh Andy or Andy, Chucky is going to be a he's gonna be well, there's a lot of stuff we don't know. Is well, he gonna okay. be Wi Fi, Bluetoothy? All, right. all right, so here's the Okay, there's a lot of like spoiler shit because there's a lot of set photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of rumors. But from what I have been told, it's just going to be someone hacks his AI. Oh, really? I think. And one rumor I heard was, was like an employee at one of the factories. Rumors, everyone. Mm -hmm. it, it could be bullshit. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Fuck it. We're just speculating a little bit, spitballing. Here's what I heard. It was something like one of the factory workers uh, commits suicide, but then somehow hacks it so... I don't really know that 
the supernatural element is going to be completely gone. It's yeah, just I hope it's not. I would hope so too, but from what I've been hearing at the very least is it's not Charles Lee Ray. Oh, wow. Which does kind of bug the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. But again, who the fuck knows? With it being this slickly shot, if they can just with the way it looks, which is honestly really really good. Mm-hmm. There's that one frame I sh- that I paused it on when we were talking about it earlier. It's like Toy Store. The Toy Store's uh, warehouse. Yeah. And the Toy Store. Mm -hmm. Atmospherically looks really, really good. Yeah, that's interesting. So what I was told is that he's just an AI who's been hacked and it's super advanced and it can learn and it gets jealous. That's an interesting move. Yeah, because what is going to happen that? Well, Which why would they do literally that? exactly the same as James Wan's thing he was working What's on? M three Gan. M three Gan. Yeah. Which I kind of wish that happened. See, th- there's kind of what I wish happened. These movies are more dueling doll movies than we thought. Yeah. They're way closer. Right. Because we even made a joke about that. We're like, you know, like, how the hell is this going to work? Talk to me, damn it, or I'll turn off your Bluetooth capabilities. That, that, <laughs> that's what you were saying. Right. And it's like, here we are. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like that but, in a way. But, but here's the thing. There's mm-hmm. that one part in the trailer where the guy's kind of lurching around. Yeah. Okay, you know, there's a scene where everyone's panicking in the toy store. Mm-hmm. And what I am guessing is, and this is what everyone's guessing, because it's not, this is not me being original. This is just what everyone's saying who's been following this shit closely. Because I kept seeing marketing materials for this. And honestly, I think the weird thing that kind of caught my attention is the marketing materials are good. Like, yeah. They, they're... They're interactive and interesting, whatever. But one of the things people said is that they're going to... the Ch- Chucky's going to find a way to hack all the other buddy dolls. Oh, really? And there's, like, all different kinds of dolls. Like, there's, like, an African doll. There, there's, like, a... A bear doll. A bear doll. There's, like, a... Blonde doll. Blonde doll, red-haired doll. So it's, like, every race and, like, every, like, hair color. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, American Girl. Yeah. Or like, Barbie or, you know, like, yeah. dolls. So he's going to hack all of them. Then we're going to have a, I guess, pardon the the uh, comparison, sort of a small soldier scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that guy's lurching around kind of weirdly when everyone's panicking in a tizzy kind of makes me think that maybe there's some uh, voodoo slash supernatural element at play here. Yeah, or that's a, another, that's interesting because maybe there's there are a couple X factors here. Right. One is we still don't know who's going to be Chucky. We still yeah. don't know who the voice is, which is Speaking curious. of which, you heard in the trailer, mm-hmm. like there's that part where you kind of hear it. It sounds like a tape being rewound. Mm-hmm. Randy. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely, it sounds like the doll is like learning or something. I don't know if that's going to be the voice voice. Speaking of Andy, Andy's like much older in this. Yeah, that's one thing that like, I found kind of weird. Maybe but, twice as older. Because like how old is Andy Barkley in one? He's like six or He's seven? like six. This kid's straight 12, up. at least. Yeah, he's like 12. You know, the actor's 13 now. And this is like done filming though. I guess the excuse you can make in that case is... Well, it's a really technologically advanced doll, so uh, you know, kids love the the hoverboards and the yeah. the technologies. You know, if this is different, it's one thing to be different in a remake. That's one thing. But if right. this is different and good in its own right, well, I mean, I guess that's all we want, right? You know, don't make the same movie. Don't tell the same movie again, but still make it a good movie. I guess, but it's hard. Well, hard see, to but do. that's kind of the thing is. When you're doing an adaptation or you're doing a reboot or whatever, it, it it gets tough to decide, well, which parts do need to stay. Mm-hmm. And I guess... Uh, I think the things the that Charles, need to stay... Yeah, Charles Lee Ray, it's like, isn't that kind of a thing that needs to stay? I think that th- that's like, that and like, the like, other marquee thing that needs to stay is the doubt. Like the fact that nobody believes Andy. Oh, of course. And Andy well, is a suspect. That's a hallmark of all killer doll movies right that needs to the doll did it yeah i guess the difference here is uh you know i've seen the first the first child's play trailer Mm -hmm. it doesn't fucking give you any clue whatsoever that chucky's really alive right there's like maybe a hand or something but even then it gives you the idea that it could be uh just andy Mm mm-hmm this is clearly abandoned that, and since it's a remake and we all know that Chucky's alive, mm-hmm. you can't really go that angle. But the doubt will still be there. 
I'm very curious as to who they cast. Right. I am too. Uh, we, we cycled through some names we want. Oh, yeah. John Malkovich well, well, is Nate, there. Well, I mean, we're not serious, but no. be hilarious. John Malkovich. I mean, it's this is a make or break thing, yeah. I feel. You know? Like, you cast this, you either have me or not. That's true, because, for example, I thought, I mean, he still is. Robert England, irreplaceable as Freddy. Mm-hmm. Jackie Earl Haley was not a bad not a bad substitute if you must remake it. Right. And that's kind of the thing about most of these remakes. I'm not 100% against them. Mm-hmm. But obviously with the circumstances of the TV show going at the same time, that was what threw me off about it. Right. But in retrospect, there's there's some okay remakes. Yeah. Like the 2003 Ch- Texas Chainsaw Jessica Biel, it's all right. Mhm. The whatever two thousand nine ish Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, I actually thought that was a really decent, enjoyable slasher movie. The remake of the movie on your sh- the shirt you're wearing right now. What's that? Oh, you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was all right. Halloween, but Rob Zombie's Halloween. Horror, oh yeah, horror, yeah, yeah. Horror remakes. Oh wait, yeah, I real I'm I know I'm I I know it's blasphemy, but I I really liked uh, yeah the the first. Let me let me reiterate the first Rob Zombie <laughs> Halloween. The second one, talk about disparity in quality mm-hmm. between the, the, the one and the two. Obviously, the first Halloween, though, is still mm-hmm. the best one. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't mean the remakes aren't fun in their own right. And the, the ones we just mentioned are like, uh, horror yeah. remakes generally can be fun, except Psycho. Yeah. That's the fucking same movie. Like, the but, same But movie. not as good. Not as good, because it's like, I've already seen this. It's the first one. So, okay, I guess in that regard, I can I can see where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they're doing things differently with the technology and the whatnot. It's modernized and whatnot. Yeah. Like the cast. Yeah. Aubrey lo- Plaza's good. Love Br- Brian Tyree is, Henry's had himself Aubrey a year. Isn't Aubrey Plaza, like, kind of young to be, like, a mother of, like, a 12-year-old? Oh, how, how old is she? I want to say she's 30-something, 34. Okay. okay. So she's, yeah, like, I guess. 21 she had him. Okay, that okay. Twenty one. No, 20. okay. She's she's a little older than I thought. That yeah. that works, I guess. Uh, what's his name? Brian Tyree Hill. Yeah, Brian Tyree Henry. Henry. Sorry, Jesus. He's good, man. He's had himself a year. Yeah, liked him as uh, Fred or uh, Fred Jeff Davis. Uh, My- Miles Morales's dad. Miles Morales's dad. He Great. had a good bit role in White Boy Rick. Yeah, he's he's done good. Done real good. See, that's something you were telling me earlier, is you think he chooses his projects well. Well, you look at the year he had in 2018. I mean, not yeah. just on TV. I mean, he was... Or not just in movies on TV. He was in uh, Atlanta. He's a regular on that. Yeah. He was on Hotel Artemis, which you weren't the biggest fan of, but he I, wasn't the problem it had, with the No, movie. it wasn't the... He, none of the actors in that were the problem at all, in fact. Right. He was in White Boy Rick, as we mentioned. He was great in Widows, which I completely forgot he was the bad guy in that. He yeah. was in he was in one scene in If Beale Street Could Talk, which was a good scene, and then he was in Spider-Man. But, like, all of those movies are, like, at the very least, like, pretty good. So like, he's watchable. choosing his projects. Yeah, so this is... Interesting. So, I, I guess with that in mind, that that does help this movie's case. There was one thing in this trailer, though, where, well, I'm kind of torn on it because it was definitely the coolest moment in it, but mm-hmm. it's also so obviously the third act. Yeah, the part where Aubrey Plaza, Aubrey tied Plaza's up. like tied up and on this apparatus that it's like it's lo- uh, rising like upward. Yeah, whatever. no, it's gonna hang her, mm-hmm. and then. You just hear any mom. He just screams, mm-hmm. and it's like pretty clear that that's that's got to be the final showdown. And you know what? If it's not, good on them. Yeah, you fooled me. You fooled the shit out of me. If it's not, yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. If that was a little play, a little little play in the audience's favor. If that's not okay. If that's not the <laughs> second to last scene, that's probably like. Like the second act turning point or something. Maybe I was surmising like maybe this is the scene where like Andy like, gets now, caught. Yeah, now or now it's personal and they mm-hmm. go to because there's some set photos I guess or some shit where they're like on a farm or something. I don't know. There's a lot of question marks with this movie. It's not a super involved trailer, so there's a lot up in the air. We don't even again we don't even know who's playing Chucky, so this could be anything. And again, I need I remind you, Lars Klevberg. Director of Polaroid, 
Written by Tyler Burton Smith, oh, writer of Kung Fury. Son of a bitch. Now now I remember why I hate this project. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. You forgot. Now that I remember who's directing <laughs> and writing shit. Yeah. we. It, it That's could. what I'm saying. Maybe this is pulling a Transformers 4 through 6. Oh. Because none of those trailers looked bad. But mm-hmm. it was just one of those things like, you fooled me once, not coming back again. Mm. But the trailers looked cool. Yeah, shit. So, uh, there's a lot up in the air. I don't know. I might eat crow. And you know what? If I end up seeing this and liking this, I'll make a highlight reel of all the horrible, na- nasty, negative things I've said. <laughs> and then we'll review it right after that highlight reel of me talking shit. You heard it here. You heard it here. I, I might eat crow. <laughs> and it was weird. I had, a f- I had a feeling, too. I said it on last episode. Mm-hmm. I said... Dude, what what if I what if I eat what if I feel like I have a feeling I might eat crow, <laughs> and here we are, and I'm I'm still still got that feeling, but director and writer makes me think maybe maybe I won't. Yeah, well I guess we'll soon find out. Well, yeah. maybe not so soon, but maybe this I'll, year maybe I'll eat the crow a little, but then I'll barf it back up. Y- yeah, I don't know what that would mean, but yeah, <laughs> where's that phrase even from? I think it's actually something to do with like English, like. Eating a crow, like pot. I think they actually made like they baked crows into pies or some shit. I don't fucking know. All right, so there you go. Idioms where I don't know the origin. <laughs> so that'll do it for the Child's Play remake trailer. On a lighter note, yes. Uh, Super Mario Brothers animated movie is in the works. They're targeting a 2022 release date to be co-financed by Universal Illumination, to be more exact, and Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo is very involved with this. In fact, Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa revealed that this movie's coming out in 2022, saying, quote, The development of animated film of the animated film based on Super Mario Brothers with Illumination is moving along for an anticipated theatrical release around 2022. So, yeah, that is it is happening. It is happening with Illumination. Um, so they're the ones who've, for those of you playing at home, Illumination does the Minions. They did, uh, uh, Secret Life of Pets, right? Secret Life of Pets. They did, uh, what do you call it? Um, The Grinch, right? Oh, did they? I May- think so. Maybe. Uh, point is, I think the, the Minions and Despicable Me are their most popular those are the big, series. Those yeah, are the, yeah. the bankable ones, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, but... The other thing that's interesting is you see who's producing this? No. It well, I mean it's Or I saw it but I don't remember his name. It's produced by Nintendo. By the way, the Grinch was Illumination. Okay, cool. Uh but uh Shigeru Miyamoto is producing this himself. Oh wow. He is a producer on this, which is it begs the question, and you you brought this up to me earlier, is this going to be good? Because of Nintendo's involvement, because of how careful they are with their licensing. They're, they're extremely careful, and that's mm-hmm. kind of my thing is, you know what? They did wait a long time to give it another shot. Yeah. Because as we all know, in 1993, it didn't really work out. And maybe it did to some people, but in the ironical for the for the for LOLs. The lulls, yeah. yeah, for the lulls kind of way. Mm-hmm. Because... That that's what I call a two out of two bombs movie. It sure is because it's it's awful, but it's a good time. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> it, it's it's a rare type of movie, but you know, on the surface, it's a it's a horrible piece of shit. Like, I would I would love for this to be a, as pure of an adaptation of the games as is, and by that I mean, what if this were something along the lines of like a Shaun the Sheep, where it's like. Mario doesn't say anything beyond like yeah, woohoo, and like shit like that, where he like doesn't even have dialogue. It's just like a pure Let's like go. yeah, like him just jumping around and like fun like set pieces of just him like beating up Goombas and shit. Like see, that's my like when I imagine a Mario animated movie, like that would be the shit. Yeah, <laughs> see, I'm fine with this, but the second you do some bullshit like starring Helen Hunt <laughs> and uh, like like Ethan Hawke. Um, Ethan Hawke is Mario. It's me, Mario. Got to get to next. I got to get to next castle. It's like wow, what a what a larger than life cartoon character voice. Ooh, I'll say this much actually. Here's here's a what you got? A, a forecasting. If Charles Martinet is not involved in this, I'm gonna be fucking mad. Because he's think- Mario. 
Well, see, that's, fucking Mar- the only other person that was ever Mario is dead, and his name is Bob Hoskins. Yeah. <laughs> That motherfucker is no longer with us, so you get Charles Martinet at least. <laughs> well, that, see, that's the thing that I that Nintendo being involved makes me think that could be a difference here. I think is so. that they won't go that route of choosing stars who have boring voices. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they will at the very least if they're going to choose stars to be in this. They'll choose people who can voice act. It's a, it's an interesting situation because I think Illumination is very much that animated studio that always picks the more bankable things and does the more bankable um, jokes and bankable moves. Like, <laughs> the minion took a selfie. <laughs> or it's just like, oh, barf. Shit, well, shit yeah. like that where it's like, whatever. But they are, they have a very, their movies look good. You know, like I saw, I've seen Secret Life of Pets. Like it's, it's not an exceptional movie, but it looks good. Like the yeah. character designs are real good and the animation is very fluid and the worlds are cool. So they are, they're very, they're weird. Like they're kind of a slippery animation yeah. studio to figure out. Cause you're like, sometimes you make shit that's actually like pretty good. Like right. the f- first two Despicable Me's I hear are pretty de- or the second one I hear is actually pretty yeah. good. I haven't seen any of them. And Steve Carell actually, like, puts his heart and soul into that character. Well, yeah, it's, like, not his voice. Yeah, it's not just, like, hi, I'm Steve Carell. He, like, does the accent. He makes it a cartoon character. Right. And I'd be hard-pressed to believe that uh, a Nintendo-involved Mario cartoon uh, wouldn't do the same. And as I said... Grinch, too. Yeah. Like, Cumberbatch, I couldn't tell it was him. Yeah, I couldn't either. So, as I said before, I think their involvement... And the fact that they're so careful, you know, they didn't ever compromise anything ever, like seeing Crash Bandicoot on Xbox, Mm -hmm. you know, or like whatever other multi-system or uh, multi-console games came out that were originally exclusively on one. Nintendo is very good at keeping things close to home, Mm -hmm. so to speak. Well, so the fact that they'd work with someone on a large scale project like this. To me, I I would imagine that's a good sign that this is something they really believe in. Especially after Hollywood already fooled them once with this property. Yeah. You know, you'd think they'd be very, very cautious. And it seems like they are, because it's been how many years since the first, or since fucking Super Mario Brothers? Like 25-ish years. Pretty right? much. Like, yeah. that come out in 93 or 95? 90, 93 or 4 or 5. Like, 90, around, around that era. 93, it says. Yeah. I just saw it. Okay. Oh, that movie's... It's so good. <laughs> it's so <laughs> terrible. But that's the other thing. They're smart by making it animated. Yeah, that's kind at, of at the what very it least. should have always been. Now, it, I, I can't confirm this, mm-hmm. but this is going to be an animated movie, not one of those bullshit hybrid ones like Smurfs. <sighs> this is animated. This isn't, or like like what Sonic is going to be. Yeah. Or it's going to be both. No, at, at present, it doesn't say anything about live action. Okay. So as long as it doesn't do that, then we're heading in the right direction. Honestly, there's just, it's just, it seems kind of simple in a way. Just have them, as you said, beating up Goombas, maybe getting fireballs, just doing all the classic Mario shit. And really important is probably some good ass bright color schemes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It seems like, it seems like a shoe in for a, for a good movie. Yeah. Well, it's a long ways off, but I'm excited, I'd say. As am I. All righty. So our next story, we got a trailer for Justice League versus the Fatal Five. And uh, the logline, I just want to make sure I get this logline in, is the Justice League battles the Fatal Five. That is the official logline on IMDb. Is it now? Yeah. Those being Tharok, Emerald Empress, Validus, Mono, and the Persuader. Okay, so I have to say right off the bat, I'm, I think that was just a rumor What's that? That log line? I, I'm not <laughs> really sure. confirmed if they battle the Fatal Five. It, it is Justice unconfirmed. the Fatal Five. The trailer does seem to support that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, but this trailer looks awesome. Yeah, I was kind of shocked. It, like, it looks like it. Remember back when we announced this? Yeah. And this was like the one we were like least excited about because like it was like Wonder Woman, Bloodlines. What was the other one? It was like Hush. Hush and then like. Fucking uh, oh, uh, Superman, Reign of the Superman, yeah. and then another one, and Which like I, I've still got to see Reign of the Superman. Is that out? Not yet. Oh, oh yeah, it comes out later this month. But like this was the one that I was like, eh, Justice League versus Fatal Five, whatever. And you're right. This is I like this trailer a lot. I agree. This is probably I don't want to jump the gun because I haven't seen it yet. But this looks extremely promising. It looks like 
one of the better DC animated movies in a while. And that, yeah. Part of that is it's got that Bruce Tim. Oh man, look, that that look that was so refreshing. I'm like, this just feels like it. It looks like it's gonna feel like another episode of Justice League. And it's got most of the same cast, I think. Yeah, Kevin Conroy, uh, George Newbern is Superman. Uh, I'm trying to. Well, I mean, there's there's no. Sadly, there is no uh, uh, Phil Lamar. Oh shit! But, for real? Yeah, we. Well, I mean, oh, but I mean, you got Jessica Cruz and like. Who's like? Oh, you have Miss Martian now. I, I think Jessica Cruz is a cool addition too. But you got one. You got Susan yeah. Eisenberg as Wonder Woman. Okay, good, good. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the, the 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 trilogy. The Trinity is there. The so Trinity those are, is there. Those are our you got our Jessica main Cruz, Trinity. which uh, it's kind of a bummer that Philomar isn't there. But yeah, and she's, I, a, she's a suitable substitute. Yeah, no uh, Flash either. Yeah, I mean, not everyone's there, but this looks like a classic. Just wall to wall, just. Just fuck. I don't know how to describe. It. Just wall to wall battles. Just yeah. Lots of fisticuffs. Oh yeah. And it's it's been a while since we've really really gotten a, a an extremely good uh, like big team up movie that I've seen. I mm-hmm. mean, there's a few I haven't seen, but they just kind of looked not as great. Not that great. Yeah. But uh, this director Sam Liu, he's mm-hmm. he's got a pretty decent track record. He, he did well. He did some recently that I thought were just so-so, like the latest Suicide Squad one. Oh, yeah. Hell to Pay. I thought the R-rated it was, one. I thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. But he, his track record in general is pretty solid. He's done a lot of other... Th- like he did a couple for Marvel, even. He did Planet Hulk. Oh, wow. It was a really good one. He did Crisis on Two Earths, the Justice League one. And did Gotham by Gaslight, which I thought Ooh. was really, really good. I like that. I like that one a lot. He's also like just been a journeyman, like storyboard and like art department. That's dude. what I mean. The guy is super well versed in this type of animation. Yeah, I, I have got I've got faith in him because this trailer looks really dope. Yeah, I was it, really shocked. It basically it looks was. like another episode of Justice League, which is like God. Which that's such a good fucking show. <laughs> we've all sorely missed. Damn. And you know what? I, I'm glad to have anything that is remotely reminiscent of that back. Mm-hmm. And hopefully this can help DC get back on track, I guess. I mean, they didn't stray that far. It's no. just there, there's been a few kind of middle-of-the-road efforts. Mm-hmm. So I want this to go back to that God-tier shit, like the Public Enemies, which he also directed. Oh, man, that's a I great think. one, too. Or at least I'm pretty sure he directed Public Enemies. Yeah. But this will be out uh, on digital release on March 30th, and then the DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, whatever the hell other... <laughs> Things. Digital Mabob. Yeah. The discs yes. will be out on April 16th. All right. So looking forward to seeing that. As am I. All right. Moving right along, we've got more DC news. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's just comic books and killer dolls today, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Stargirl series adds Justin Austin. Wa- J- sorry, Jesus. Jake Austin Walker. Mm. Fucking three name kids. <laughs> I think they're so cool. And uh, Megan DeLacy. Uh, DeLacy, right? Yeah, DeLacy. Not, not Delacy. DeLacy. <laughs> no, DeLacy. De- Meg, Meg DeLacy. Uh, the the three-name kid is <laughs> an undisclosed role. And Meg DeLacy. Yeah. Uh, she's been cast as Cindy Berman, otherwise known as Shiv. Mm. So, for those of you playing at home, Shiv is the... Main uh, one of the main villains in the comic series that this is based off of, mm-hmm. and obviously you've read all of Stars and Stripe. Indeed, I have. As have I. Yeah, man. So when I saw that Shiv was cast, I was excited. I mean, it seems like it was a foregone conclusion that she'd be in this, since uh, what's his name, Nelson Lee, right, mm-hmm. is cast as the Dragon King. Yes, it makes sense. And we, be- it begs the question: to what extent is she going to be involved? Uh, I say, hey man, just look to the showrunner. Is yeah. Jeff John's baby? I think he'll have. I think he will have. Uh, he'll have uh, probably her suit up at some point. That's see. That's the one thing I was. It what from the articles I was reading, it didn't really seem a hundred percent confirmed that she'd be Shiv or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think it seems relatively obvious. Mm-hmm. Seems like there's going to be a lot to cover in one season, though, because it's based off the comics, but. It also sounds like the the JSA 
And yeah. Some injustice. of the others, yeah, the Injustice gang like characters, a lot of those characters are going to have uh, like bigger roles in this yeah. than in the comics. It sounds like they're going to be a bigger part of this. Plus, there's like additional characters like Sportsmaster and all that shit. Yeah. So, Wildcat and Dr. Midnight. And- yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these characters are going to, they're, they're going to make, uh, there's a lot to cover in one uh, season. So. Where's my yeah. goddamn, what's the guy's name? Paintball man? Paintball guy or whatever? Yeah. yeah see, Where I'm, the fuck? No. I, you I'm, know, I'm waiting for that episode. Se- season, season two. Let's, let's, you know see, what? Yeah, sure. It could be because it's like he's not going to fit in here. No, it's, this is, it sounds like this All would right. be just like JSA yeah. and Injustice Society type stuff. But I, I think, uh, yeah, I feel like we'll see a little bit more of her, and I, I definitely think it'll tie in well because obviously you have Nelson Lee, the Dragon King involved, and I just hope it's not some bullshit where she's it's like the you know Dragon King's in jail and she says I'll get revenge for you, Father. Suits next up. season. Yeah, it's like come on. Yeah, but we'll have to wait and see. My guess is she'll suit up mid season, and that would be ideal. That yeah, that would. That'd be ideal. And God damn it, just yeah. give me like at least how many full episodes of her in costume I, as Shiv? Like maybe two or three, you know? I, like I can, you know. I, if, I, yeah. The whole season, if whole of next season is that, then I guess I don't really care. Yeah. But like maybe one or two. We need it. No, we got to have at least two solid episodes. Yeah. Because she's the, she's the. The arch nemesis, besides mm-hmm. the Dragon King. Yeah, maybe this will be an. I'm, I'm thinking it might. Maybe it'll be an origin story for her for some of the season. I think that that'd be my guess. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait and see. God, I'm I'm chomping at the bit for the Comic Con trailers, just all of them. Oh, like, you think this will be one of them? I think so. Wouldn't when is, it? I th- I think you might be right. When does it start production? Pretty soon, right? Uh, I don't know, but suppose. I was reading somewhere this is supposed to be out in August, but I thought it was September, but that would be good to get it earlier. Yeah. Uh either way though, th- there's a lot of trailers that are going to be there. there's going to be this, probably some Birds of Prey stuff. Yeah, there'll be some interesting stuff going on there. Maybe one more Wonder Woman 84 footage. Yeah. Maybe well, we'll definitely DC get stuff. some Joker footage, right? Or that come out before. No, wait. No, cuz Joker's not out till October. Uh, <laughs> We're talking about ju- this June. Yeah. You don't think they'd have the Joker trailer out? Oh, no. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, they'd, maybe they'll maybe they already have it out by then? I don't know. Yeah. And it's it's I don't, different. I don't know what the hell is going on with Marvel, but uh, that's so that's that's it. Stargirl's got some new cast members. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to fill it out. So I guess that, that'll that probably do it for now. So we'll just, the rest is a uh, wait and see basis for Stargirl. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving on to our next story. This is a couple weeks old, but I can't fucking believe I didn't hear about this. Me neither. Eric Andre has a hidden camera movie called Bad Trip coming out. Apparently this October, October 25th to be exact. Mm-hmm. And it's it sounds like it's basically his show, but a movie. Yeah, it's actually, to it, add more info to that, yeah. it's from the jackass producer Jeff, Jeff Tremaine himself is producing this. Who I, I'm a big fan of his work. Right. You know, and... Um, this, well, I guess it's time. Have we talked Eric Andre on this yet? We've talked some Steve Brule. A little bit. My God, the Eric Andre show. It's it's the greatest show on television. We've, we've already talked about All right, about people this. playing at home, if you haven't seen this, go on YouTube and search Time for Some Ranch Eric Andre. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. I promise you, you will probably hate it. Yeah, no. If or, you, or love it if you if you love this, uh, if you love really really unbelievably obnoxious humor. Oh yeah, and prank videos and all that mess. I, you know what's weird is he's actually caught a lot of fire. Not not fire, but like he's caught fire recently. Like a lot of people have actually his his videos of you know it's not just the two a.m. Adult Swim crowd that's getting a hold of his stuff yeah, anymore. He's he, actually like gone viral a couple times. He's in Lion King for fuck's sake. Yeah, coming out soon. And he voiced a character on Disenchantment, which was—I mean, he was fine, but that show sucked ass. Oh, I mean, he's a guy. I mean, like he's but the point character is, acted he's, forever. Yeah, he's been on like Two Broke Girls and like Big Bang Theory and like 
He, he was on that show, Man Seeking Woman. He was on an episode of, what's that show, Modern, Modern Family? Family? <laughs> yeah, that was so random. But he's a, he's, he's a journeyman character actor, we'll say, but little do a lot of normal people watching who watch more Modern Family know, he is a funny motherfucker, and his Adult Swim show, Eric Andre show, is a testament to that, and it's the reason why we're excited for this movie, Bad Trip, which just sounds more like his uh, hidden camera prank hijinks uh, shtick. This this is yeah exactly. This essentially sounds like a long episode of Eric Andre show, and I don't know what the hell's been going on with that show if it's still happening or what. <sighs> Maybe it's been this that's been in the making, you know. Yeah. So you know what? I'm glad to see him back in action. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Cannot wait for a trailer. Oh yeah. All right. So on to our next story. Uh, this is just kind of a small tidbit. Not not a ton to say about it. Deadpool, even though it's coming to Disney. In whatever iteration it'll be, whether it's a separate, you know, label of Marvel or brand, it's still going to be R, even though it's at Disney. That mm-hmm. was confirmed by, was it Bob Iger and co? Yes. Yeah. They said that uh, Iger recently told investors during the meeting, or during a meeting that they had, that while Deadpool will remain untouched, the movies will be carefully market- marketed to prevent confusing customers. Um, so it does sound like they're probably, well, not probably, it sounds like they will plan on keeping these separate, at least for now. Yeah. Um, I like this move. I mean, I, though I'm, I'm not, we were talking about this earlier. I don't necessarily like crave more Deadpool. Cause as we, we mentioned a bit ago, like Deadpool two is fine, but it's not, it's not as good as Deadpool one. And I don't think it justified itself as a movie all that much. Not really. It- well, it reminded me of, uh, what, what's her name, Hit Girl's character in Kick-Ass 2. Mm-hmm. It's like, kind of been there, done that, this is no longer as funny as it was. Yeah. Or it's like Kick-Ass 2 or like Kingsman 2, like that cheeky kind of humor where it's like, this was funny the first time, but now it's just like, I don't know, like, yeah. what else you got, you know? like I'm, See, that's kind of my problem, is it's it sort of feels like... Two, two, you didn't really do a whole lot differently. Mm-hmm. And then three, it's just going to be old news. Yeah. But But I'm I'm glad Disney's doing it, I suppose. Like, I'm shocked, too. I didn't think they would. I thought they would scrap it. I guess I'm glad they're open-minded to having another line of Marvel movies or whatever. Mm Because I know there's a lot of people who think certain movies would work better if there are. Like, a lot of people have been talking about Moon Knight for years. Mm. And they say it would have to be R, and I don't really see why, but... You know, if yeah. that if that's the route they were to go with it and it yeah. makes sense, fine. And I think Disney is careful where they're not just going to... Obviously, gratuity for the sake of... Or gratuitous violence for the sake of gratuitous violence doesn't seem like that's their MO. Mm-hmm. So I guess, yeah, as I said, it's, it's good that they're, they're showing a little open-mindedness. But yeah. I, I'm not really that interested more Deadpool jury's out on what the hell Disney's gonna do with New Mutants or Dark Phoenix yeah apparently like the pro- this is just no small tidbit I guess the producers don't even know what the hell is going on with New Mutants sounds about right uh, that makes that that makes uh, that makes makes, ab- makes two of us yeah that makes absolute <laughs> sense we don't know what the fuck is going on with that movie either <laughs> it's just so crazy though because when the hell does this happen with large studio movies I don't know even even if it's let's say the budget is something ridiculously low like 10 million mm-hmm. that's still a a big studio movie yeah i i can't think of anything else where this kind of shit happens it's very odd right okay hot take there robert <laughs> <laughs> well no it's just like god damn it i i i don't know man i don't know what's going to go on with those movies does new mutants even have a release date well, we said, like, they don't fucking know. Yeah, they, they literally the don't know. It's crazy. It's madness, I tells you. Madness. Oh, Are they boy. just waiting? Uh, like, you know, it's like June's the final date it goes through. Okay, guys. Time oh. to push it back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. If the deal is signed. All right, fuck it. Scrap it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, no one gets to see it. No one gets to see it. Nah. <laughs> just out of spite. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Fuck, yeah, fuck you, Disney. You can't have my, you can't have my fresh movie. Nah. <laughs> Uh, Who knows? Okay, so that's that. Deadpool still BR. <coughs> uh, moving along to our last story. 
This is another short one. Avengers Endgame is revealed to be three hours long. Yes. I mean... It sure is. I don't understand how it wouldn't be almost. Yeah, it seems like the Russo brothers are very dead set on that, too. They said currently, yeah, the running time is at three hours, but the test screenings have been doing so well that they're like, we don't know what to fucking do. And I say, motherfucker, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wanted this movie already. Like, I wanted Infinity War to be this length, slash right. maybe even more than that. Because, like, yeah. God damn it, I've been in this world for you know, 10 years now, and I, I, I don't give a shit about a three-hour movie. Like, of course I'm going to fucking sit there. Like, yeah. what else am, gonna, am I going to do that day? Oh, well, <laughs> on, on t- a fucking life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on top of willingness to atrophy while watching a film. Right. Uh, it, it just, this was such an impossibility to begin with, you know, <laughs> so many years ago that there would even be this many characters on screen at once. In a movie this long. Yeah, and... But the fact is, we built it up the way it is, and started from the the, the, bottom, the bottom, and now, now we're here. here. Yeah, as somebody said. I don't remember who said that. Some, Might have some been Ronald McDonald or something. <laughs> 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 that was a joke. I know who yeah. said that. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, no. I hope I get bed sores during watching this. Thing. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm a fan of this. Did and you hear what- about the intermission rumors? I heard about that. What do you feel about that? A throwback? I like it. I kind of like it, too. <laughs> I really like that, because... <laughs> Makes it feel epic, right? Right? Fuck, this is it. <laughs> you know, because could you imagine, you know, some crazy shit happens? <gasps> yeah, yeah. Get a, your popcorn a, a colle- a colle- <laughs> a Collective gasp. <laughs> intermission, followed by murmur, 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 murmur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, People would be going nuts. That'd be amazing. Ah, uh. Yeah. So I'm fine with that three hours, and I feel like by doing it that way, no one gets left out. Everyone gets a little time to shine. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. So that'll do it for the news. Moving on to reviews. Except not really reviews, one review. We have a review, of course, of uh, Deadly Class Episode 4. We're still watching this show. That's right. We're, we're watching, still watching a TV show. Watching a TV show. <laughs> right. So episode three, obviously, uh, was the dance. Mm-hmm. And shit went down. There was a brawl. Blow people, darts. People shot blow darts that make you have hallucinogenic freakouts. There was a sick fight between Henry Rollins and Wong from Doctor Strange. <laughs> yes. It was great. <laughs> and now we're dealing with the rep repercussions of that episode so sort of sort of <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of partly partly yeah a slice of it mm-hmm. so it starts off well we yeah. get a we get a, a, a another cameo from a certain character in the very very first scene oh okay tell tell the people about the very first scene well we head back to shabnam's house shabnam uh, of course is the old rocker from episode Two. Or two. Shab, Shab, oh, wait, no. I thought Shabnam was the kid. No, that's right. Whatever. The, what the hell's... Well, Brian Posehn's character. What the fuck is his name? Yeah, hold on. Let me look that up. Uh, Brian Posehn, the, the, the old... The, we'll call him the the older Judas Priest fan who right. promised, who made a promise to never stop rocking after a Judas Priest concert he saw in the 70s. Uh, he's on his phone and he's arguing with somebody about uh, risky business and, like... He's in at this house and like everybody's asleep and it's like trashed, and uh, he he's yelling at this person on the phone about how much he doesn't like Tom Cruise's character in Risky Business, and he's like, you know what, fuck you, mom, and he, <laughs> he hangs up. I the love phone. that reveal. That's <laughs> great. He's like, it's such a like, why do I care about this kid, man? And he's like, well, of course Rebecca De Mornay's hot, and the subway scene is great, or he's like, the subway scene is hot as shit. <laughs> he's like talking to his mom. <laughs> Good stuff, but Just completely zero filter whatsoever. There's a knock at the door. Shandy is his name. Shandy, there we go. Yeah. There's a knock at the door, and who is there but Fuckface Wilson himself? And that's the only look we get of him. Yeah, this wh- thing what that the we, hell is that? It's they're like, teasing this pretty hardcore. I know they're teasing it, but th- that was kind of the symptom of this episode. Actually, I lied. We get another look at him later on. Yeah, at the end, maybe? Or? Yeah, where his parents, where Shabnam's parents show up, and they're like... Or like, Shandy, you mean? Like the, the kid, the little oh, kid. Oh, Sh- Sh- Shabna? You mean the, the chubby kid? Yeah, his yeah, parents yeah. show him. He's like, at least he's making friends. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, what school? What's his name? Fuckface Wilson. 
Yeah. He, he's got Shandy on a fucking dog collar. <laughs> he's like naked. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? But anyway. So, yeah, we, this episode's a little all over the place because... What's it really about? Okay, so it starts off in detention, but then it's not about that. No. Okay, so they're all in detention for fucking up at the dance and fighting. Mm -hmm. So they're all in detention. Uh, Victor calls, uh, what's his name? Marcus and Nancy boy. Mm -hmm. And I laughed a little. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So, because he's doing push ups. Yeah, yeah. Marcus doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what are you, Nancy boy? I'm like, all right, Victor, you get you gained a point back. Yeah, not not we're not at broken at even though. Right, right, we're not on great terms, but okay. Yeah. So then, uh, pick up from the weird box that uh, has the picture of Saya. Yeah, that was episode two, wasn't it? No, I think that was the, that was the last one. Okay, I so think. so that carries over mm-hmm. from that last episode. Yes. So the karaoke. Yakuza are are after her, and they basically try to kill all the kids. Mm-hmm. And the episode starts off, they're just in detention, and I'm like, I'm not liking this. Yeah, no, neither was I. They're like, they're all like having fun or whatever, and then the characters start to sound a little redundant, because they're talking about sneaking out, because obviously uh, these kids who are in an assassin school, they're not just going to sit in that room. Yeah. You know, they're, they're going to find a way to sneak out. I'm like, all right, I like where this is going. But then they just go to the the confiscated shit room and get on the, yay, man, let's take this, you know, moped off a jump. Mm-hmm. And it just, it felt very stupid. And you know what was weird odd. about that? Was like, they they just get out of the room. Like, they're like sitting there and like, man, what are we going to do? And Marcus is like, oh, wait, I have a lock pick. And I'm like, why didn't you just fucking do that immediately? Like, it felt like it felt like they were there for, like, hours, like, when they actually decide to, like, leave. You know what I mean? Maybe he's just really dumb. <laughs> Perhaps, though, I'll admit. Duh, wait a minute. I got a lock pick. Though, I'll admit, this is actually a better Marcus episode than I thought. That's one thing that is weird. I Like, I barely hated Marcus at all in this episode. And, in fact, you, you agree with him a couple times. Yeah. Because... One of the reasons they want to leave the room is Saya's sword is taken away. Mm-hmm. He's like, I gotta get it, blah, blah, blah. And Marcus just says, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. And I'm it's like, just a sword. Yeah, I kind of agree with Marcus. Which brings me to an issue I have with this show. And it, I use it as a, not a pro, but I, I kind of comment, we commented on it last week. But it's kind of starting to be a little bit grating, which is there's some pretty flagrant character inconsistency throughout this. And you had a, a particular character inconsistency gripe with Saya. Yes, okay, so this is sort of a small line, but it, it kind of kept popping up again in the episode. Mm-hmm. So, Saya has this notion, like, let's get out of here, I can get us to the vending machine or whatever, right. and it can give you all the diabetes filling, you know, high fat snacks or whatever that you can wish for. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like that is such a Marcus... It's a Marcus line. It's a Marcus whiny namby pamby, mm-hmm. like cry about health food shit thing to say, and I just I didn't feel like I was getting that vibe from Sai in the past episodes. I thought her thing was that she's just kind of stoic. Yeah, and, and in this one, she's sort of, uh, sort of like a wet blanket. Yeah, a lot of characters' lines, it feels like they'd swap. Like that doesn't sound like a Marcus line. Like yeah. that sounds more like a Willie line, or like that doesn't sound like something like. Petra would say that sounds like something that like Lex or like Billy would say you know what I mean like Petra was really kind of uh a lot less what's the word not not mopey but like she was a lot less sardonic in this and she was more she was like more angry and it was just it's... angry and like outright like plucky like she would say shit in this where I was like why is she like she's got like a positive chip on her shoulder and like she doesn't have like ill will towards Victor the same way I thought they they would have ill will like she's kind of okay with them still where I'm well, that, like that's what's we weird. fucking hate no. this kid exactly it was that 1940s couple thing yeah <laughs> ooh I'm mad at you and then Victor's just like ah of course you are toots but you'll 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 come around you always do. <laughs> Oh, but I, I guess you're right. But it's like, no, motherfucker, you... <laughs> you don't bull- care I fed you those white supremacists, do you? Yeah, yeah. come back. <laughs> yeah. All I did was make sure you were bullied and what for? It's good for you. Builds character. <laughs> oh, I'm going to shoot you in the head with the dart. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, fucking, what's going on with some of these character relationships, man? I uh, get it. 
I don't know. I, well, I guess to be fair, Victor only kind of facilitated it and didn't partake in the bullying. This is true. He was only a uh, he was a liaison or a messenger, if you will. But still shitty, though. It doesn't matter. Going off of the characters and relationships, I know you had a big issue with subplots, either not being addressed or not going anywhere or being it, talked about at all. It feels like some of these subplots, like, they skip an episode or two. Mm-hmm. You know? Sometimes. I think with certain subplots, that's for sure. Like, the Charlie Fuckface Wilson thing, it's like every... It's like, are we really just going to talk about this or like the Chica, beginnings and ends yeah. of yeah, each episode? That, that's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, get to the point of this somewhere in the meat of the episode. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, they just... I'm like, oh, this Charlie Fuckface guy must be a real big deal. Right. But just kind of the same thing. I'm going to kill you. Do you know how to found this school? Yeah. Nope. I'm going to kill you, too. Mm-hmm. Every episode, it's like... Motherfucker, if I don't find there's somebody who knows how to get to school, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> it's just uh, a, a little exhausting. And the, as we mentioned, the first 20 minutes are really not good. not great. Though I did admire how, like, I'm starting to notice something the show's been doing, which is, like, it's kind of tackling a bunch of different sub-sub-genres of, like, high school movies. Yeah. Where, like, episode one's, like, the orientation, and, like, episode two is, like, the dan or like the the house party episode or like the house party movie trope stuff for high school movies and like episode three is the dance stuff and then episode four is detention yeah so it's like a, a little lot of reminiscent of stuff well there's this one shot of Petra and I just couldn't help but think that's Ali Sheedy. Al- Ali Sheedy's yeah. character in Breakfast Club like next week we got the road trip episode so I, I kind of like how they're Doing a little bit of play on no, like, yeah, I, I don't these mind are coming that. of age things, but it's just, man, it took us a while until that kid got his hand cut off. <laughs> See, that, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. His name is Boyd, right? Boyd, yeah. So I thought I haven't seen him around. Mm-hmm. I wonder how quickly it is before he's going to get killed. Oh yeah. So then they're doing the whole bike thing, bike thing, and I, I thought this is really dumb. Like the beginning of this kind of breakfast clubby. Homage was fine, mm-hmm. but then the let's take it off the jump. It just felt cheesy and dumb. Mm-hmm. And they're all getting along too well. Yeah, like they're all sur- they're all bonding. Like Chico and Marcus are bonding. I'm yeah, like, they're they're kind of commiserating know. over like you wouldn't know my brother died, man. And it's like Chico, you're still a piece of shit and threatened to kill me. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't give a fuck what happened. You still like grabbed fucking Maria by the throat and like pinned her to a wall. You. F- Fucking yes, asshole. Psycho. And <laughs> on top of that, it's his whole thing. Well, at least you like good shitty synth rock music. <laughs> like, do all these kids listen to just the same fucking music? I know. Th- that annoys me. Like, different characters listen to different shit. Mm-hmm. Chico is listening to Public Enemy. Right, right. Like, that'd be my guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as soon as that kid gets it's, his hand cut off, man, exactly. I was like, thank you. Because <sighs> pretty much from then on, it's smooth sailing. Yeah. It's just like, from that point get on, away the fuck. Oh my God. It was, I loved it. And they had some great fight scenes. That's what I was going to say. I think these had the best fight scenes. Oh yeah. That fight scene at the end in the restaurant. Number one, we had, a, well, number one, the fight scenes were good. Number two, there's a number of them. There's like three of them, I think. You know, oh yeah. And you know what the other thing is? I actually felt danger. Cause like when those dudes come in and like, you see Petra get like stabbed in the shoulder and like fucking and Victor gets sliced across the stomach. I'm like. Are they going to fucking die? Right. Like, it's I was like, actually kind of worried. They don't I, die. That's what I'm saying but is... But, damn. This heightened the the assassin element. And that's the thing sometimes the show struggles with is it gets a little too high school-y soap... Soap... Uh, soap... Uh, Jesus Christ. Soap, soap opera, opera. Oh, soap opera so, yeah. Soap opera-ish. Mm-hmm. And I kind of think, where's the, the comic booky y danger... Action elements. Right. This upped it, because these guys weren't fucking playing. Mm -hmm. This was not a class. No. You know, uh, but it was deadly. Yes, it was. For most of the episode. Though I could have used a bit more. Yeah. I could have used a little bit more in the beginning. But once it amps up, Karopki Mob is there to fuck shit up, Mm -hmm. taking no prisoners, because they want Saya. They do. And you're right. We got Victor and Petra are injured. And you actually, that's what I'm, you're right. Now that there's danger, it's a little more interesting. The stakes are finally higher. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So we get that shit going and it's fine. Yeah, I thought that from the end was like, this is the episode I signed up for. Yes. You get some, some. Uh, well, partly. How so? Well, it's just it took a while to get going. Oh, yeah. And it's- they're still juggling all the. 
Well, there's some weird stuff going on with some of these other characters too, like Oh and then there's that the the classic like what do you care about me? When mm-hmm. he's like talking about how he might be dying. She's like, Oh I don't, but I do. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah oh, God. You learn a bit about <laughs> learn a bit about Petra's origin, yeah. which well, I was that's like, the other Jesus. Thing. <laughs> Petra's right. origin is interesting. <laughs> yeah, super messed up and like We Jesus. learned that her family was, was all about Jesus and then they're all about Satan when they met some weird cult guy. Yep. And then the dad kills the mom and mm-hmm. she looks at the mom's eyeballs floating in a jar. Yeah. It's messed up. But you got that, and then you got Billy's... So then you're like, so that's why you dress like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah. You don't have a great outlook on life. <laughs> Makes sense. Right. And you get some, There's some trouble on the home front with Billy, which I thought was... We, I don't I don't know, still don't know how to feel about it, because it's it was different. I'm like, oh, we're seeing the home life of but a But see, character. that's what I'm saying is it fell out of place in this episode. Yeah. And Billy's Billy's not feeling too good. He, well, Billy wants to kill his dad. Yeah, and I thought, well, why the hell didn't he do it while he's home? Which is weird. I'm like, they're allowed well, to go ben, home? Yeah. Because, like, I, th- I don't know. That was the other thing is, like, the rules and geography of the school are a little weird. Like, there are scenes where, like, they're clearly running throughout the halls of part of the school, and there's no one around. But then they're, yeah. like, cut to, like, Willie and Maria... Where they're trading like comic, the comic book and like the passport thing. Like, oh yeah, and they're still in the school. Well, so that's and I'm like, another, what part of the school is this? Yeah, in? well, that's another subplot. Mm-hmm. Like, can we just focus on the fucking dudes with the swords? Yeah, it's a little more interesting than that. At See, least in this episode. If that doesn't go anywhere, that's filler. You know, it's like, oh, I gotta get a passport. Oh no, Chico's back. I thought he was Chico's gonna be gone back. for the weekend. I thought he was gonna be gone, but guess he's I here. can't use the passport. It's like, okay, so cool. That was a dead end. Yeah, that's I hope my that, point. I hope is. they play it. Like maybe she'll use it at the end. I don't know, but I hope it's not. There's that. I hope there's it's not uh, fluff. There was Master Lin talking to that to his lady. Wife? Was his wife or a girlfriend? Or I don't even know. So that's weird. A, no, see, that's the other thing this show has been doing that that. Sometimes work, but sometimes it bugs me. When they're extra cryptic about shit. Mm. For example, when the guy opens up the box with the picture of Saya. Okay, oh, duh, I can figure it out. Right, right. The hit's out on her. Mm-hmm. But there's just all this shit with Master Lin and whoever the hell that lady is. It's like, you know that thing. Oh, I know that thing. What the fuck is this thing? Well, like, And they're you talking know? about, like, he can't escape from the blah, blah, blah. And she's like... Yeah, you can. I did. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you escape? Who are you? Hello. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I feel like that lady in Billy Madison, like, right. what is what is a horseshoe? <laughs> what does a horseshoe do? Are there horse socks? Is, is anybody, anybody listening, listening to me? me? <laughs> I'm like, what the Classic. fuck is happening? But that, that's kind of the impression I got. Uh, but God damn it, did they did they not fucking entice me for episode five? Because I'm like, all right, you're going to Vegas. Fine, I'll watch it. <laughs> I like a road trip and a change of scenery never help or doesn't help because I'm starting to get a little bored of being in the school. Just just in the school. Right. But at the same time, just kind of feels weird. So in Vegas, what the fuck's going to happen? Let me get is the Charlie fuckface says his name. It looks like he shows up. Because, like, they have yeah. him pinning Marcus to a wall or whatever the fuck. Okay, I hope, so, I'm so wondering what capacity that's going to be. Billy wants to kill his dad. Mm-hmm. Billy wants to kill his dad. Is there gonna, there's going to be a drug trip scene, right? Where they, like, take... They, I heard something Probably. about acid or some shit. Yeah. Which, I don't know. That was the other thing, the Billy scene, where he's like, and then it happened. I just... I just you just couldn't what motherfucker like okay I get it <laughs> your father's abusive let's move on mm-hmm. Jesus that scene just took two the pacing in that scene I'm like fuck me you could have said this in two what, what, words what is the edit like the editors just on set like talking to the director yeah the, the episode we need like five more minutes yeah just have him vamp for like five seconds. yeah 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 just five have minutes. him stretch this out yeah it it's just like you could have. The, the objective of this scene is he wants to kill his dad. It's his like dad's a bastard. His so dad whooped his fucking ass. Faster. Yeah, yeah. His dad beat his ass. Now he wants to to put a stop to that permanently. Mm-hmm. Bada bing, bada boom, move on. But it didn't. But those sword fights, though. Oh man, the sword fights are so good. They're so good. That see, that's the shit. That's you're right. That's like that's the point of the episode where I said this is what I signed up for. Mm-hmm. A little more of this, please. 
Yeah. Because we, we're starting to get lost in the high school shit, and I get you got set up characters. Great. We know all their origins. They all have fucked up lives. Mm-hmm. Let's get on with the, the fisticuffs and swashbuckling. Right. <laughs> right, right. And Kendo, to be technically precise, if we're talking Japanese hard fighting. True, true. It is the Yakuza we're talking about. Yeah. Or or Aedo, if you're real hardcore <laughs> sword, sword fighting. But overall... I you know, it's not the worst episode. I, I'd say it. Well, maybe it's. I like this one about the same as the house party one. I think I that's what I ended up giving a six point five. Did I get that six point five? Yeah. No. See, that's that's my thing. Is uh, there's potential for this to be the best episode, but mm-hmm. the usage of the subplots that dragged it down for me a bit. So I, I think the, the, I, I'm back to the three out of five for yeah. my for my score, and I'm at back at six point five. Okay, so... So you have gone 7, 6.5, 7, 6.5. I've, I've gone 7, 6... I think I gave the... I liked 3. Are you saying 7 and 6? No, no, sorry. I went 7, 6, 8, You're doing out of 10? Six. Oh, fuck. <laughs> have I you, brainwashed your ass? You rat bastard. <laughs> You're going 3.5... You went 3.53, 3.53. 3. Right? Uh, no, I went 3.5, 3, 4. Three. Oh, right, right, right. I quite liked 3. Okay. I... You know, it was almost there for me, but I get what you mean. See, the the subplots just killed it for me, and it's... You know what I think the problem is? It's, is that it skips around. You can't really remember from what episode to what episode things carry over, and we're only four deep. Mm-hmm. It just feels like normally shows have that kind of rule. Okay, this is going to be a thing in episodes three through six. Right. This is, And then new things will pick up in four and five. Mm-hmm. And those things in four and five will pick over up to, to seven, seven and eighth episode. Mm-hmm. This didn't really follow that kind of linear pattern. It's like, this goes here and then this. And it's just, I'm imagining like a, a, a whiteboard and they're just like, just, someone just puts a bunch of dots yeah. all over the place, like to describe the timeline. Like it, it kind of, yeah, it was very all over the place in terms of structure because it starts yeah. out and you're like, okay, this is a bottle episode. Yeah. This is just going to be like, they're in detention for the episode and we're going to get some character shit in there. And it's like, nope, here comes the, the Uber plot of the, the show. And it's like, okay, it just felt a little messy. But overall, as an entertain, but overall, as a piece of entertainment, fight. but overall yeah. sword fights. Yeah, as an overall piece of atten- uh, of entertainment, I say to you, sword fights. Sword fights, indeed. Yeah. So, I'm still in it for the long ride. We're gonna Same. Wa- we're gonna watch the rest of this season. I'm in it till the end. Yeah, the end of maybe season this one. This still beats the <laughs> shit out of most TV. Yeah, where like the average episode is a two out of five because mm-hmm. it's you know. Shot well, edited well, but it's boring. Mm-hmm. It has a story you hate. Right. Th- this, I'm still in it. It's just I wish it was a little more focused. I agree. So that'll do it for our review of episode four of Deadly Glass. All right, so that'll do it for episode 40 of Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. I'm Alex. And I'm Robert. And uh, we we promise we'll start doing movie reviews when when good things come out. Yeah. Don't worry. Dumping season's almost over. But until then, you can listen to all our stuff and keep up to date with all our our updates and reviews and whatnot by following us on our social medias. That includes Facebook, SoundCloud, and uh, YouTube. You can find all of them at the self-titled Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. Got a comment? Got beef? Got something to say? Leave us a comment and tell us what's up. See you guys next time.